Hey everyone, and welcome to yet another Cloudvisor webinar. It's that time of the year again. Late November not only brings Black Friday, but for us all AWS fans, the biggest and most important yearly AWS conference reInvent. My name is Jonas, I'm a customer success manager here at Cloudvisor, and today I'll be your host. Let's jump in. The biggest conference brings the most news, but don't worry, we've got you covered. ReInvent 2022 just finished last week, and it was grand. In over a week, more than 50,000 AWS community members visited in person, browsed through main keynotes, tracked focus breakout sessions, and vast expo areas where partners and vendors showcase their products powered by the AWS cloud. Due to constant investment in technology, infrastructure, and networking, AWS continues to be a trailblazer on so many fronts in computing, connectivity, ML, AI, and security. AWS leads the $200 billion public cloud industry with more than a third of market share. And boy, AWS Cloud is transformative. It changes how we move in our world. BMW is banking big on connected car systems together with improved driving experience, and AWS is their main partner in doing that. It changes how we play. No Fortnite? Literally hundreds of millions of players compete regularly with up to 13 million online at the same time. It changes how we travel. Expedia Group makes 600 billion AI predictions per year, which help us decide where to go and how to get there. It changes how we look for inspiration. Pinterest stores an exabyte or a million terabytes of data on Amazon S3. There are around a thousand startup unicorns. The company is valued over $1 billion and is staggering 83% of them run on AWS. I think this figure says a ton. But this year was turbulent. Late February, Russia invaded Ukraine, which made many neighboring countries and companies operating in the region rethink their resiliency and disaster recovery strategies. But the most impacted country was, of course, Ukraine. It was promptly offered to help move critical government and strategic companies' data and operations to the cloud. Working across time zones and language barriers, AWS Solutions Architects in the first four months securely moved over 10 petabytes of essential data during 61 government institution migrations and preserving critical state and private, financial, social security, medical, educational and land ownership information. Now that is a real statewide digitalization on steroids. I feel great that AWS Cloudvisor's main partner works alongside the Ukrainian government helping in the time of need with their technical expertise and services. But let's get back to the sunny Las Vegas and the reinvent stage. Numerous announcements were made, new directions explored and strategic ones reinforced. Compute is at the core of all AWS services. And one of the more interesting compute innovations introduced was Lambda Snapstart performance optimization feature for latency sensitive applications. Snapstart basically eliminates cold start latency for rarely used Lambda functions. It does this by taking and caching a snapshot of the function's running environment after its initialization. Once the function has to be run, it simply resumes from a cache snapshot and launches up to 90% faster. Currently, only Java 11 runtime functions are supported, but others should follow soon. No extra cost and better user experience, I think that's a nice combo. New recently opened AWS regions also deserve their spot in this recap. Switzerland, Spain, both in Europe, and Hyderabad in India started operations last month, increasing AWS region count to 30. Check them out if your user base is close by, but be aware that new regions start with a smaller subset of AWS services and a bit higher cost. Next, what about data? Another very prominent AWS trend. It got a lot of attention this year. As AWS CEO Adam Slipsky mentioned in his keynote, data growth is nothing but exponential. Companies use it more and more to innovate, understand their business, and make better decisions. AWS promises zero ETL future for data workers, and Redshift is just one of the services that was put in a spotlight during this reinvent. Redshift Auto Copy from S3 feature allows users to automatically load new S3 data into their Redshift tables and generate insights without additional complicated ingestion workloads. Amazon Aurora Zero ETL integration to Redshift makes Aurora data available to Redshift analysis without any ETL pipelines, 
while also lowering cost as you no longer store duplicate data. Adding Redshift to lake formation, a centrally managed IAM-like service for data access permissions, allows easier management of data sharing between Redshift data warehouses. And yet another news on Redshift is the announced full-fledged integration with Apache Spark, so developers can now build Spark applications interacting with Redshift data easier than ever before. Enough with the Redshift already, I hear you. <laughs> okay, moving on. AWS Vice President for Data and Machine Learning believes that data beats intuition. However, having a lot of lower quality data in your data lake can turn it into a data swamp. AWS Glue Data Quality can come in handy here by monitoring and analyzing data in your lake, data ingestion pipelines, and providing recommended data quality rules and alerting on incoming sloppy data. No more time-consuming manual creation of data quality rules and writing validation code. Next in line is Amazon Data Zone, a service that allows to discover, catalog, share, and govern data at scale. Now you can manage and govern access to data with fine-grained detail, no matter where it's stored, in AWS, on-prem, or on third-party sources. The service should make it easier for cross-team collaboration and data sharing across organizations and beyond. OpenSearch was one of the last data services without a serverless option. Not anymore. OpenSearch Serverless is launched in preview, so developers no longer need to configure, manage, and scale clusters and instances, but rather they can focus on running petabyte scale search and analytic workloads. But if you run a smaller OpenSearch operation, watch out. A minimum of four OpenSearch Serverless capacity units will set you back around $700 a month, so definitely not the cheapest option. Last in data news is Amazon Aurora and Amazon RDS support for blue-green deployments. It forks the master database and keeps the staging one in sync. It's beneficial while scaling instances, deploying and testing minor or major engine updates, or schema changes. It basically is testing on production. Cool, right? If all goes well, the staging database can be promoted to be the new master. This definitely will make some complex MySQL and MariaDB deployments easier. Okay, enough data news. Talking about blue-green, any of you got chills when updating CloudFront distribution? One misconfiguration and all users are greeted with those cheesy error messages. Not great, right? But now it's fixed. The announcement of Amazon CloudFront continuous deployment support lets you test and validate the updated configuration against a portion of all traffic. There's also a panic button to quickly revert the configurations should the error messages start piling up in real-time logs. After passing tests, all traffic will gradually diverge to the updated version. No DNS trigger required, and the process is compatible with CI/CD pipelines. Next, security. Security is AWS priority zero in building any service, so to no one's surprise, security wasn't left behind this reinvent by any means. As we gather more and more data in databases, they become high-value targets. Amazon GuardDuty RDS protection offers threat detection for Amazon Aurora. It monitors database access patterns, logins, and uses machine learning models to identify and alert about potentially suspicious activities. It won't hurt to enable it if you already use GuardDuty. Another newly introduced security service was Amazon Security Lake. It helps to centralize into a purpose-built data lake all security-related data, such as VPC flow and CloudTrail logs, GuardDuty and Inspector findings, and all kinds of logs from many other AWS services. And it can also connect to on-prem sources through security partners. Security Lake aims for less data duplication, normalized data format, easier security, data store in S3, analysis, all while providing a complete organization security picture across accounts and regions. Let's move to the news that developers would fancy. Ever wanted to build a serverless application with AWS services like Lego Blocks? Well, news on AWS Application Composer service should catch your attention. This UI-based application prototyping tool lets developers continue with existing cloud formation templates or start from scratch. Drag and drop Lambda functions, DynamoDB tables, API gateways, SQS queues, and other serverless services to accelerate your app architecture development and configuration. The best thing is that as an output, you'll get not only a visual representation of your workload, but also a cloud formation template and resource files needed for infrastructure deployment. That's neat, I'm right. 
Another one on the list is the introduction of Amazon Code Catalyst service. It is a unified software development service that yet again aims to accelerate software development on AWS. Code Catalyst provides integrated project experience by provisioning automated CI CD pipelines, development environments, issue tracking systems, source code repository, and collaboration tools to plan, code, build, test, and deploy. The new service also includes a library of blueprints with common project resources for the right combination of architecture and infrastructure. And the last but certainly not least, news is around sustainability, which is always on AWS agenda. Whether it is more efficient or specialty chips that do more work with much less energy or efficient data center planning and design. This year focus shifted towards energy and water usage. Currently, the plan to be running 100% on renewable energy is to be hit in five years ahead of the schedule, in 2025 instead of 2030. To reach this, AWS contracts for renewable energy with utility-scale wind and solar projects and provides tons of clean energy to the grid. And water? It is needed to cool data centers. AWS uses evaporative cooling, which requires 85% less water than conventional methods, but the demand is still there. In order to become a water-positive company, AWS partners with various nonprofit organizations, which have already brought in 2.4 billion liters of potable waters to the communities in need. That is setting an example on how environmentally responsible a company can be. And while on a positive note, I think that's a wrap for this time. I hope you all got something valuable out of this recap and the reInvent 2022. Be adventurous, build, test, measure, repeat, and as always, reach out to Cloudvisor with any AWS-related questions. We are AWS Resell and DevOps service provider for startups, so we will be happy to help. Take care and see you next time.